What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to Astroneer. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and continue to accumulate the things we need in order to build our next base over on this super bitchin' ass planet that we've landed on, this Tundra planet. I always like snowy weather, but that's because I didn't grow up in snowy weather. People have convinced me that the reason that I like snowy weather is because I don't have to live in it. Fair enough. Fair enough. People are always like, oh, you live in California. The weather is amazing there. And I'm like, it's true. We only have two seasons. We only have two seasons. We have reasonably pleasant with a chance of rain. And then we have hot as hell, don't go outside or you'll burn up instantly. You know, we're outside like the temperature of an oven. But, you know, I, I've never had to deal with snow in any real capacity before. Like, I've never had to shovel it, for example. Never had to do that. Not a thing that I ever had to do. It seems like it would suck. So what keeps people from just salting their driveway? Is that a thing you're not allowed to do? Like, does that cause problems? Because, like, why wouldn't you just, like, put salt in your driveway and just be like, yeah, I'm just not going to deal with snow today. Take that, snow. I have defeated you through the power of my well-deployed iodized weaponry. I'm just going to pick up a bunch of organics, and we're going to be trading things like this entire time while we're out here. In case you were wondering what we're doing today, yeah, we're still doing that trading thing. Still doing that trading thing where I try to end up with supplies that I need compound. I need lots and lots of compound because we're going to slap a whole bunch of storage on top of our buggy before we leave. In addition, I would also probably recommend that we get a couple of solar panels. Now, I don't know if the solar panels will actively function if they're inside of a storage slot. I don't know if that will work. But we're going to find that out along the way, too. We're going to try really, really hard, and hopefully it works. So let's move some of this stuff around. We've got nothing but organic matter on us right now. Just carrying around a whole gaggle of space weed, all the O's you could ever want. And then we're going to convert the, I guess we're going to convert this into compound. Yeah, that sounds good, because I think compound is what's going to allow us to craft for ourselves. Oh, no, nope. yep, it's going to let us make a whole bunch of little mini solar panels. Alternatively, I think we can also use it over here, although that might have been copper or aluminum, I don't know. So it's aluminum for a wind turbine for a... Nope, don't need a, I need a solar... Oh, it's compound for that too, so maybe I'll try and put like a good solar on here. I'll put one good solar on here, and then I'll put like one good wind vane on here so that we never have to worry about electricity ever again. And then once that's been completely and totally taken care of, I think life will be looking pretty good. We've done a great job at taming this planet so far, but now we've got to explore it. What kind of dominion can we have over a place if we haven't explored its recesses? If we haven't really gotten down deep into the hairy butt crack of this tundra world, how can we say that we've actually discovered any of it? I don't think that we can. I don't think that that's a claim that we can make with any due diligence, and I love due diligence, so that's what we're going to focus on here today, okay? That's what we're going to focus on. I need you to go back down into the slot so that I got extra space for one more thing to ship out. There we go. That should be good enough. Organic materials all nice and finished off with our compound zounds. Let's look around. We've got compounds all up in this BZ, so we got four compound right there. I'm going to suggest... Perhaps that we convert this into, oh, I don't know, maybe laterite sounds pretty good. So we'll convert that into laterite for right now. We'll pick these up. We've got the four compound. We're going to use that to make another storage slot. And then once we've made ourselves another storage slot, we're going to make a, a solar panel as well. So there's our solar panel. I suppose I should test and see if the solar panel works when it's attached to storage. Eh, it's worth a look. I, I I think it's worth a shot. I don't know if it's going to be super efficient, but we'll put one right there. And then as soon as our laterite lands, I also need another round of storage. So there we go. One more round of storage and we should be solid. Our base here is actually way more efficient than the base that was on our first planet. No lie. No lie and no doubt. I just want to look around the planet and see what there is, though. And so I'm going to put this on the opposite side. And once it's on the opposite side, we'll take the laterite. That'll give us our two aluminum. We'll turn that into a wind turbine on that side. And I don't think we'll have to worry about power ever again on our craft if we have both of those two things combined. And I think that's important because I don't like running out of gas in mysterious neighborhoods where I'm not sure if I'm going to survive the experience. I don't know if you've ever had that before, but it's not that bad, actually. I'm, I'm bullshitting you. Most neighborhoods are perfectly fine, even hella late at night. People will be like, oh, you're not from here. And they'll be like, yeah, you should probably leave and not be here before. My, my buddy's a cop, and he said he's got to do that all the time. He works in Richmond, like Hayward, out in the hood, basically. And he's like, every now and again, you just get these people 
that are just like cruising through a neighborhood at two in the morning that are like looking for something and they have no idea why they're in this like they're in the wrong neighborhood their navigation has failed them and he's like it's weird how frequently i just act as an escort he's like i'll tell people i'll be like yeah you don't want to be in this neighborhood at this hour so what i'm going to tell you to do is i'm going to follow you to the freeway i'm going to lead you to the freeway and what I want you to do is just follow me. Run the red lights. You're not going to get in trouble. I'm going to run the red lights. You're going to run the red lights. And you're going to get out of this neighborhood right now because you don't belong here. This is not a neighborhood where you are safe. And so I'm trying to help you right now. Oh, look at that. It folds out into four if you put it on the... What? I learned a new thing. That's never happened before. That's pretty epic. I should probably do something with this right here. But frankly, I like the symmetry of our vehicle right now, so I'm not going to do it. Let's jump in. And let's go see what's uh let's go see what's on offer. Oh, I need my gas tanks though. I need my gas tanks. Let me grab those off the side of this building before we go any further. I kind of like the way our base looks, our, our roving base looks right now. It looks pretty cool, right? I I like it. We're going to build another one of these vehicles, by the way. We're going to build another one of these and it's going to have the crane on it. And then we're going to build a third one and it's going to have the drill on it so that we have like different functioning vehicles that do different things. I am going to start checking out some of these alternate locations that may have something for us now that we have the ability to transfer things around. Let's have a look-see here and see what's going on with this location. What do you have going on this location? You've been a little bit precariously named. It's not a super specific name. We've got nothing but a plug over here. We've got nothing but the plug. Okay. So with the plug on this side, I don't see anything else that looks like a research object or anything else that might be useful. We are going to use this to navigate, though, because there is the chance that I will never find my way home if we leave. What direction are we striking off in? I should probably get a bearing before I do this. So let's assume for a minute... Wasn't there a compass at some point in this game? I can't recall where my compass was at. Hmm... I don't think I need to build a compass. Sure, I'll build another tank just in case. Tanks are good. And helpful. So with three tanks, we should have a fairly extensive amount of time that we can spend on the surface without having to worry too much about suffocation and the lack of breath. Alright, so off in this direction, what do we see? I'm just going to try and keep a straight heading so that I can just turn around and head back to base regardless of where we end up. Looks like we got some lithium on the right hand side that's poking up up above the surface. I, oh good, we can still see it in that direction. Good, we haven't gotten around the curvature of the planet yet. Got a little bit of hydrazine here. We got spiky blossoms in there. Can I drive this down into the cave? Will it get hurt by the spiky blossoms? It will not. So it doesn't trigger spiky blossoms. However, it can't really get past them either. Hmm seem to have dug myself into a trench. As far as obstructions goes, those stones are rocking it. All right. We got a little bit of compound on this side. I'll probably farm that out and throw it on our storage vehicle for later. Let's hop out very rapidly. And this is much quicker than trading for it. I actually was of the opinion that we didn't have any base resources on this planet. And so I learned something today. It's not refitting me with power at the moment. Ah, there it goes. It's actually got to have an active turbine going. Cool. It's recharging itself at the same moment, too, so that's all good and dandy. Extra dandy with the featheriest of hats, because that's what dandies wear. Feather hats. Oh my god, I found out about the Red Mage in Final Fantasy XIV. I've played a lot of Final Fantasy XIV. I'm thinking about going back. I may throw my life away on this. I finally found out that my class is being added to the game, the Red Mage. Used to play Red Mage. I used to play Red Mage in Final Fantasy XI. Pretty excited about the prospects of playing it again. It's not going to let me have this, is it? It's going to force me to sit something right there. And until I sit something right there, it's not going to let me utilize my other slots. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's fine. I'm not going to fight you over it, vehicle. I'm not going to fight you over it. However, let's jump back in. I mean, I really should go down in one of these caves. Oh, look at that. There's a fart cloud coming. That's what my entire family's house looks like after chilly night. Like, you just see it rolling around the edges of the house, and it just gets worse and worse. It never gets better. The saturation never truly leaves. Hydrazine, I don't think I'm going to focus too heavily on for right now. We've got another cave right here. Might be worth looking into. Might be worth investigating if it wasn't for the ridiculous quantity of terrifying spiky plants down in here. 
Terrifying spiky plants, I'm going to bury you beneath the earth because you are terrifying and you hurt me all the time. I'm going to do my best not to... F God damn, look at all these spiky plants and shit in here. There are so many spiky plants. I don't really know how to proceed. I'm all out of power. We're going to have to mine this out, I think. Oh, there's some power right there. Yes, recharge me, please. Don't mind if I do treat myself. Treat yourself, 2016. Alright, so having treated myself now, I suppose I should also fill up my oxygen tank, because why not? Alright, so we got a little bit of extra power here. I'm just going to burrow my way through here like a mole. You guys had suggested this as a valid strategy. And just to show you that I listen, that I listen, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to dig along the edges. And we're going to see what's down in here because we could definitely use some of the resources if there's anything nice in here. Got plenty of power. So let's just take it around the edges. Yup. Cool, see? Life lesson. You gotta learn, if you want to be truly pleasing to your audience, you gotta learn to work the edges. I would love to go down there, but it seems dangerous. Oh, look at that. There's another cave down there. And a research object that I'm probably not gonna take back home with me because it's too much effort. Okay. Well, let's have a little look around here. I'm gonna try not to be too taxing on my oxygen supply. This is a recipe for heartache, I can tell already. Heartache by the number, trouble by the score. I have no idea what just happened there. Every day you love me less, each day I love you more. What the shit was that? I have no idea what that was, but it screeched at me. Friendly things do not screech. So we've got malachite over here? Yeah. Why not? Sure. Absolutely. If I need to and oxygen starts to get low, what I'll consider doing is crafting a couple of filters back at my... back at me boat. Oh, we've also got titanium up there. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll take it. Absolutely, I'll take that ladder right. I didn't even see it up there. Just creeping. Oh, we're full up. Okay. Uh, that means I'll probably chuck the power so that I can have that extra laterite. There we go. Okay, so we're down to our last tank right now. Let's go back to... We'll go back to the car with our gains. Our elite gains with a capital Z. There is some oxygen over here, so I think we should be alright. I may use some of that compound, though, to craft up some filters to make my life a little bit easier while we're down here so that we can really get some true exploration done. Like some real exploration, that solid exploration, that exploration that knows no bounds, it knows only leaps. Oh, that's not good. I fell in a hole. I went to all this effort to avoid dying, and then I'm going to die by falling into a hole. I knows it. I knows it. Alright, so supplies are all dropped off. We're looking solid as a rock. Like a rock. Strong and never strained. Like a rock. Alright, so there we go. I don't want to fall in any more pits. Uh, I've got enough compound to where I should be able to whittle together some filters if I need to. And so I will do that before we go any further. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to bang out like three or four filters. And the filters, if you didn't know, I talked about it earlier on in the series, but if you jumped in like where you're at right now. The filters will act as a, a longer duration oxygen tank essentially. So your oxygen won't go down so long as you have like a filter ready to go. Now I don't know if they stack. That's part of the research that I'm doing right now is to figure out if these stack. Get out of here. I don't need you. I don't want you. Hmm. I think I'd prefer not to fall off a cliff right now. 
So I'm going to avoid any dangerous spelunking in that direction. However, I will consider going this way. We do have dangly vines, so watch out for those. Those could be troublesome and attempt to murder us along the way. We've got something suspended from the ceiling right there. I think it might be a research object. I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. It's actually kind of a weird-looking research object. We'll have to go in on that one right there. I'm going to pick up some coal because I assume that's going to become important later on for something. Or maybe it's just a research that, or maybe it's an object that isn't utilized. I don't know. It could be useful or it might not be. Man, that filter's holding in like a champ right now. Doing a good ass job. I'm going to take this back with me too. Because this one, I haven't done a whole lot of the ones that are like polyhedral or anything like that, like rhombic looking ones. So this one right here actually has like a cleavage, in case you're wondering. If you don't know what that is, geologically it just means that there's a tendency in an object and or substance. It matches up too with its, with its chemical structure, but anyways. It's the tendency of a certain mineral or form to break along certain boundaries. And so this one right here would have multiple planes of cleavage. Which gives it kind of its square shape. It's more likely to break along this one, this one, and this one. I think it has three planes if it's a square one. But don't question me. It's been like five years now since I graduated from college for geology. And I haven't done any geology since then. So, you know. It's a, uh... It has the tendency to... My brain tends to dump information that's not immediately useful. This would be one of those times. But yeah, it actually matches up. If you look at the chemical structure of it, too, if you actually go down to the atomic level and you look at it, it'll be in that shape on its atomic level, too, and that's why it fragments like that. All the way down to its atomic level. There we go. So we'll make that a little bit smoother. I'm going to slap this one onto the back of the truck, and we'll just use this for whatever we can use it for. Got a whole bunch of coal with us that I am going to try and bring back to base with this. Oxygen tank. I'm going to need you to be in a... A more manageable position so you go right there we'll take this coal back with us perfect all right so that's going back with us are we fully filled up just yet we're not fully filled up just yet well I don't see any reason not to dive down to the depths a few more times just to grab everything that we need before we step on out. I mean, obviously none of this stuff is useful. We're getting a pretty good harvest going right now. It's disappointed that the trade supplier is so much more useful for gathering things than actually playing the game. And I'm hoping that they nerf the trade station pretty soon because it's just, it's too good. Like you just, if you have two or three trade stations and a bunch of grass near your base, you can farm out materials at a ludicrously fast rate by comparison to like anything else you can do inside the confines of the game. And so it just seems like it's working a little bit over the level that I think it was intended to function at. We've got another cool little slope right here, so I think I'm going to take this one. Yeah, that'll work. We'll run up in here. We've got something right there. It just actually, it's okay. It's loose rock. Never mind. That That's rock that really likes to get jiggy on a Friday night. Mm. We got gas things over here. My suggestion would be that we murder them just like that. I think if you can detach them from the wall, they'll no longer shoot at you. And since I'm actively going to be trying to do stuff over here... Oh shit, I think there's some behind us too. Suppose I'll work my way back up and out of the cave at this point, because we've got extra popcorn on the back of the line, we're good to go. Sorry if you hear anything in the background, it's because I have a timer on my dishwasher and it just decided to turn on because I'm recording late today. Ooh, ladder right. It's never on time. It's never on time, but it's always just right. There is some more ladder right up here. Maybe we'll make that happen. Yeah. Hmm. He said as he walked away and started looking for the way out. Hold on, I'm a little bit confused. Oh no, I'm getting lost inside of a cave. This is how it happens, Nerd Castle. This is how it happens. This is how it happens. This is how it happens, getting lost in a cave. Ooh, more ladder right. Yes, please. Ooh, my cat's taking a poop, too. That's even better. So I've got cats dropping deuces and making hella noise. I've got the dishwasher on. Man, what a day to be alive. What a day. He's like, damn. My cat always makes eye contact when he's dropping a deuce. He just stares right at me. I can't help but infer some kind of, like, real malicious intent every time he does. He's just like, what? 
I'm looking at you right now. My eyes are getting all weird and twitchy and glazed over. And I'm like, ah, oh, you sick little bastard. I'm becoming a dog person very, very rapidly ever since I got my dog. I'm trying not to say it around the dog too much because I got to maintain like the level of like, you know, you got you to gotta keep them on edge. You got to be like, oh, I don't like you that much. Just so like they, they try to improve their behavior. You know what I mean? But deep down, I've fallen in love with my dog. Deep down, and I'm pretty sure I like him better than my cats combined. Like, my like for my dog is more than all of my cats combined, and he's only been here for, like, three months. I mean, the the puppy age is difficult. Like, when they're, like, 12 weeks old, yeah. That's rough. I don't think I would ever adopt a puppy at the age of 10 weeks old ever again. Like, that was, that was nasty. It was a pain in the ass, but now that he's, like, grown up and he's getting bigger, and, like, he's learned all of the training that he needs to learn, and he mostly just, like, manages his own shit, literally sometimes... Like, I can just, like, leave the room and just be like, alright, have fun, and he'll just hang out in the living room and, like, do his own doggy stuff and, like, doesn't even care. Like, every now and again, he might come down the hallway and be like, hey, where you at? And, like, look inside the door or whatever. But for the most part, he's just, like, chill with it. He's like, alright, cool, I'll do my own thing for a little bit. Obviously, you got stuff going on, you gotta pay the bills, however you pay the bills, I don't know. All I know is that I like eating kibble. My dog has a gut on him. My dog will eat so much food if you let him. He is, like, an insatiable beast of hunger. He also drinks, like, non-stop. I gotta regulate his water, because he drinks too much. Like, he'll, if you give him bowls of water, he'll just sit there and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink until he gets sick. And so, like, I gotta regulate. He gets, like, three bowls of water a day. I keep count of how many times I've refilled it. I give him one in the morning with breakfast. I give him one at night with dinner. And then I give him one in between as well, if it seems like he needs water or whatever, because we went for, like, a big walk or anything like that. But yeah, my name is Splattercat. This is Astroneer. We're coming to the end of our series here. I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff left to do. I'm going to refine out this ladder right, but I appreciate you guys stopping on by. I will see you all in future episodes of Astroneer. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hi to everybody, and I'll see you when next we meet, which will more than likely be tomorrow. Bye, everybody.